Greetings, my name is Lieutenant Joshua Edwards. I'm the Emergency Services Officer of the Seattle Composite Squadron of the Washington Wing. Today we'll be talking about the Becker 517 RT600. It's one of two variants of the Becker Direction Finder that's available in the Washington Wing. This video focuses on the basic uses and features of the Becker 517. For more information, please consult the Becker manual that's in the aircraft or available online, and of course the aircrew checklist. Let's begin with some basics of operation. To turn the Becker on, first turn on the Mission Master on the right-hand panel. Then turn the unit itself on. It will go through its startup and self-test process. If you don't see the option to choose between training and emergency, you'll know that you're using the RT600 version. Now let's take a tour of some of the basic features and settings of the Becker 517. In the top right-hand corner is the page knob. This allows us to enter and select from different frequencies that are user stored. On other versions of the Becker, this has other purposes as well that are not available here. In the bottom right-hand corner is the frequency selector. We can choose from all the different frequencies that are available and pre-programmed into this Becker 517. If we want to listen to an ELT in flight, we can select the Becker as a source on the audio panel and then adjust the volume with the knob in the bottom left-hand corner. The knob in the top left-hand corner allows us to change the squelch. Now let's take a look at the display and the information presented. LS stands for loss of signal. If the ELT signal is lost, the Becker begins counting the minutes and seconds since the last time a clean signal was received. Frequency tells us what frequency we're currently listening on for ELTs. The prominent display in the middle tells us a relative bearing towards the signal source. This is a relative bearing based on the aircraft's heading and is not a magnetic heading. In this case, 34 degrees to the right would take us towards the source of the signal. The black dot is the direction towards that source of the signal whereas the two semi-filled circles on either side are the margin or the spread or the quality of the signal source. In this case, uh, you know, where we have a very close margin, we know that there's a very high probability that that's the direction to go. In areas of higher terrain or where the ELT may be located inside a building, we'll know that there's probably a wider margin for error. The volume tells us how strong the volume is and the squelch setting, whereas in the middle we see the noise to squelch ratio. If you'd like to adjust the brightness of the display, first touch the dim button in the top right, and then use the page knob to adjust the brightness to the desired setting. Now let's take a look at entering and selecting frequencies for searches. The page knob in the top right-hand corner will bring us into this screen. Here we can select from frequencies which have been stored by users, or enter one of our own. We can select a frequency using the top left-hand knob, or we can enter a frequency of our own choice by using megahertz on the bottom left-hand knob and kilohertz on the bottom right-hand knob. If we want to see all the frequencies that are available on this Becker 517, then from the main screen we're going to use the bottom right-hand knob, which will bring us to this screen. Here we can choose between frequencies that have been stored by users or those that have been pre-programmed in at the factory, like 1215, 156.8 for maritime, 243 for military ELTs, or the 406 frequency band for COSPAS SARSAT. Here we can select individual frequencies or COSPAS SARSAT scan mode, which will look across all the different 406 frequencies, as well as offering options to decode the data blocks from those beacons. This is particularly useful so you can ensure you're tracking the correct beacon. Now let's take a look at what happens as we actually track a signal transmission. In this scenario, we're actually orbiting uh, in a left-hand turn the signal source we can see that we have a very strong signal strength on the left-hand side. There is a slight delay, as you'll note, uh, as we continue to turn for the updated uh, bearings to that signal strength because the Becker is using an averaging system. Of course, you would be feeding your updated bearings to the mission pilot the, uh, the whole time here. But you can see that we have very strong margins around the, uh, the black dot, which tells us that we have a very high probability that that direction or that bearing would take us directly to the uh, signal source. In this scenario, we're actually going to pass over the source of an ELT transmission. When we do so, we will actually want to mark that location using a physical landmark outside the aircraft so that we can come back and investigate further. When it, we pass over it, we'll actually see the bearing flip to behind the aircraft. And at this point, we want to yell mark and have the scanner or someone looking outside the aircraft provide a physical landmark so that we can come back for another pass. Now let's take a look at using the squelch in a loss of signal situation. 
We can see that we've lost the ELT for the last 17 seconds and no bearing is being shown. We could use the rep button in the top right to actually give us the last bearing to the source of the transmission. But in this case, we notice that the squelch is actually set above the signal to noise ratio. So we're going to adjust the squelch a little bit and we'll notice that once again, we're picking up the transmission and we can see that the margin knobs are giving us a pretty strong source uh, to the signal. So we know that there's a pretty good fix uh, towards that ELT location. Hopefully, this video has helped you better understand using the Becker 517 Direction Finder. Good luck and set for vigilance.